There's no shortage of awful clout chasing and entitled influencers. And today I got a real special goofball to show you. I literally just woke up, took my meds, made myself some tea and almost immediately puked it all up after seeing and listening to the most embarrassing cringe ever. This is the worst allegation, like the worst attempt at getting someone canceled on Twitter. Last week was all about goofy apology videos and this week is all about goofy allegation videos. Let me give you some context on the situation. Prepare yourself because you might lose some brain cells. A VTuber posted a video calling out another VTuber with some very serious allegations relating to consent, saying that this one guy was sending her unsolicited photos that she didn't consent to and it made her incredibly uncomfortable as well as like other people that he did this to and like he did this all to like stroke his own ego like the disgusting degenerate creep he is now this all sounds really fucking terrible right and it should if it were actually true hi you probably don't know me too well but allow me to introduce myself i'm murasaki mika i am an eldritch horror vtuber current goddess of lust and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen my messages um, the previous week regarding my own negative experience with a certain distasteful VTuber. Okay, so right off the bat here, <laughs> you can see this VTuber, and I'm using the word VTuber loosely here, as making a video clearly stating how there's this creepy individual in the VTubing scene. But the way she has it set up right now kind of feels like some weird role play scenario. And not to go off on a tangent here, but it's important to keep that role playing thing in mind because it's going to be a key ingredient in this recipe of cringe soup we're about to consume later. I am not particularly subtle on who they are, but as someone who claims to be an advocate for all things sexual or have a greater understanding of consent, you kind of suck at it. Consent is sexy no matter if you're a VTuber, a V streamer, or a drama frog sipping on some boba. In general, it's very important to have someone else's consent when engaging in an activity, especially if it's very lewd or because if you don't have someone's consent, then you are either a disgusting predator or a degenerate creep. But it's really hard to take this video seriously when she's holding a horny bat asset and trying to make this colo video as aesthetic as possible without actually saying anything. And based on the others that have reached out to me, you've actually pushed a lot of people's boundaries and made them uncomfortable all in the name of your ego and it's disgusting and whether those who have reached out to me feel comfortable or not let me know you don't have to show your face you don't have to make your own post i'll be the voice for you so not only is she trying to drag whoever this video is about down but she's also trying to drag other people into her giant drama soup too because unlike this person I actually take care to know about boundaries, consent, and all that based on my own experiences. But I also don't use it as a weapon to fuel my own ego. <laughs> How silly! What the fuck was that laugh? Imagine that. <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be a call out video? Like she had all this time and preparation to make this call out video. You'd think she'd work on her evil laugh for this too. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't even do an evil laugh myself, even if I tried. Hold on. Maybe. I, maybe I can try. Hold on. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. How, how do you be evil? I don't know. So, if you have an inkling of who I'm discussing, no, I really don't. I was hoping that you would spoon feed it to me because I have no idea what the hell this is about or who I'm talking about. Please feel free to reach out. I won't be discussing who they are yet. It's all in due time, especially when I have others helping me gather and share information. And this is where I start to get a little annoyed. Not only did she not name this horrible, terrible degenerate, but she also is claiming that she's having evidence being put together with other people, which implies that she's actively seeking out dirt on this person. And she had the audacity of saying that others have confided with her in secret about their experiences. And she's willing to use that as like, 
leverage. Like if I told someone I, who I thought I could trust with something that was like very uncomfortable and then they turned around and made a video boasting about it, I'd be pretty upset. And what's worse is that she then says that if anyone else has evidence that, you know, she would like for them to come forward and to let her know, which how the heck are any of us supposed to know what the hell you're talking about? You deranged, unmedicated. When the time comes, the appropriate announcement will be made. But after that, I'm not gonna look back at it. Cause I don't give a fuck. Like I know crazy when I see crazy, but I took my meds today and obviously she needs to too. Also, I really don't like how she's like, you know, I don't even care if no one sees this or if you get canceled or if nothing happens. I just wanna put it out there just to put it out there. Whether they get canceled or disregarded or completely ignored or not, whether anything happens or not, I don't give a fuck. I just want it to be out there. And I'm not gonna discuss it any further than that. Like, I feel like it should be illegal to do these, I don't know how else to call it other than like a revenge falling out between somebody. It's like, you know, how you have a friend and you two have like a falling out and you get really pissed off that you had that falling out. So you go around and try to smear their name and like cause a bunch of drama around them. Like, I feel like that should be illegal. Kind of like how revenge illegal i feel like purposely trying to blackmail and harass someone should be also illegal you know who you are so i hope you're prepared <laughs> goodbye no wonder why no one wants to cover this because this was really hard to sit through and unfortunately it doesn't end here oh no we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here with this stinky trash so get ready because the person who she was referring to in this video actually came out and spoke spoke up about it, which by the way, the fact that this person knew this post was about them should really paint the picture of just how much this feels like a personal vendetta from a falling out between two people. Everyone, please welcome and meet Atramentum, the alleged deranged VTuber who goes around not asking people for consent in the LewTuber community, allegedly. And uh, Homeboy here came out with a pretty hefty document showing all the receipts. And boy, this took me for a ride because I got whiplash after reading all of this. Hi, it's me, the loot tuber she's trying to cancel. She's upset that my post last week got a lot of likes and retweets. That was not my intention, but like her content, this cancellation is lazy, fake, and lacking substance. A thread. Dude. <laughs> If this were a game of Yu-Gi-Oh, Murasaki literally just activated Atramentum's like trap card or something. Like I am dead after reading that sentence. First of all, here's every single DM between us, Discord and Twitter. It's embarrassing that I need to do this, but this has gone on long enough and it's clear she's going to keep slandering me in other people's DMs, which we'll get into this Google Drive folder in a second. I want to keep reading this while I eat my mint chocolate pocky. I met Mika in January and became active in her community, including her Discord. She is going to claim I made her uncomfortable starting in February, but since then has collabed with me three times, rated me three times recently, and up until weeks ago used my content for family, which as you can see here, using the content for, you know, like the role play things that I talked about. And then here doing some role play stuff and getting things with like the collab that Art is talking about, as you can see. Oh, and then yeah, Twitter circle here. And the fact that Arta is even in her Twitter circle is pretty telling that they definitely had some kind of friendship because who just let random like who's into their Twitter circle if you don't at least have some kind of trust for them? First, she's going to claim that I commissioned loot art that made her uncomfortable. That is a lie. She has posted fan art rules multiple times. We discussed getting much looter art before and after that one and she used it in her schedules in posts. And yeah, we can definitely see the loot art getting used here on the schedules and everything too. And wait a minute. She commented that under Fifi's post. Not my girl Fifi. No way. No way. <laughs> Caught in 4K. Second, during the Peach game in February, she claims I made her uncomfortable with unsolicited pictures. I invite you to read those DMs and draw your own conclusions. Not only did he explain what happened between him and Murasaki's friendship, but he also decided to share their entire conversation because he, I'm guessing, felt like she was going to try and take things out of context and cherry pick things in a way that would make him seem like a creep. This is foreshadowing for later, by the way. The fact of the matter is that she is nothing. That's why she's still asking people to come forward in her creepy little video. This is retaliation for no longer engaging with her content. I stopped watching her because of her massive ego and lack of content. Mika suffers from extremely poor engagement and takes people leaving her personally. I encourage you to go 
scrolled through her post history and note the number of times she's mentioned it. If I made you uncomfortable, why did you keep raiding me? Why did you join my Discord? And why do you use my scripts? You are obsessed with me. And this little video threat is the last straw. My conduct in this community is impeccable. You have erred greatly trying to cancel a former friend for clout. And I feel kind of bad that he had to do all of this because this entire conversation was like super personal. So if you want to read through all of their entire DMs, then I'll link his original tweet for you to go through it yourself. But be warned, there's a lot of personal and intimate conversations being had in these dms and it's very very obvious that these conversations were not meant to be seen publicly but murasaki decided to air out her dirty laundry and show us all anyways i'm only gonna show you some of this stuff because i am not a lewd tuber but i understand the lewd tubing scene and i also understand how sex work operates in general and also a lot of these conversations get very spicy and uh venti also so I just don't think it's appropriate to show on YouTube and it also isn't necessary to show you for you to like understand this entire situation anyways. But I will show you these specific DMs here because you're gonna end up seeing these DMs later. Don't chicken out. First answer the number you pick. Put the answer in my inbox, not my status, and then make a status like mine. This is where the peach game comes in. As you can tell, it looks like some of the numbers of that post have gotten cut off, but here it says, here, copy and paste yours. No one under 18. Be brave, pick a peach and check your inbox. She said, here, here you go. And then he goes, thank you, my goddess. Hmm. I picked 14. A bit lame. I like my arms best. And then posted an arm photo. Now, upon Atra's response and seeing Murasaki's video, people on Twitter do not take very kindly to this entire situation at all. In fact, a lot of people called up Murasaki and just clowned on her the entire time. A lot of other VTubers and VTweeters made their own parody video, just kind of poking fun at how goofy she's being. Because again, if this was meant to be a serious allegation, then why did you put so much effort into making it feel like this weird yandere roleplay video. Like homegirl really did an edited fade in and fade out on the video and used a blurred background to cause ambience in the video. And this really ticked off a lot of people because there are actual victims out there who have been abused or sexually harassed and Murasaki just making a video like this feels like it just really waters down the conversation and it came off as super disingenuous. Especially since Arata had receipts. You doing all right, by the way? If you don't mind me asking, sounds like you might be going through it. Yeah, I'm just getting by with as best as I can. I got a few hours if you need to vent about it. No pressure, just an offer. I appreciate it, but it's actually nothing bad. I'm just making positive progress in therapy, but I'm also getting the mental side effects of it because of my PTSD. So basically, the better I'm getting, the more frequent, aggressive the nightmares. Okay, it's just a little weird to say like, oh, you know, I'm totally fine. I'm just having like really bad nightmares from my PTSD from all the trauma that I had. It's really nothing, no big deal. Not at all. That's totally not weird at all. Personally, I feel like if you have a lot of PTSD and trauma from sex harassment, then maybe being a YouTuber or doing sex work isn't the best move for your mental health. Like I get that sex sells, but is it worth doing this and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations like Murasaki's claiming she's in right now? I think this is really telling that a lot of this is just for drama and for clout because Murasaki started responding to art just tweets and anyone else who chimed in to defend him like girl you need a pr team or something because if you're going to get thrown into stinky doo-doo like this then you should know better than to respond to other people and make this situation even smellier than it already is <sighs> and now we're all caught up we're in all that's left is this document here oh what you thought we were done <laughs> No, 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 no. It just keeps going in this cringe storm movie that we're witnessing in 1080p here. <sighs> Murasaki made a Google Doc that felt like she put this together last minute because I really don't think she thought her video was going to blow up in the way that it did, nor was she expecting art that I just come out with like all these receipts. But uh, let's dive into it and read this entire thing because it is baffling how much spaghetti is pouring out of this document. Hi, I'm Mika, and if you're reading this, it's probably because of my recent tweet regarding the content creator, Atramentum. Despite his claims about me only doing this because I don't get his attention anymore, whatever, the origin of it has always and will be my disappointment and frustration with his stance about harassment in the VTuber community, which just disregarded how his own personal actions can come off as. What are these personal actions that he did? You might be asking, well, let me show you. I wanted to see if you wanted to crank up 
the fun with the peach game. I'm down. Haha, <laughs> yes, because I'm hungry. Remember the peach emoji game? Looks like that's where it all started. The purpose of this document is just to share my own experiences with the previous interaction with him that left me uncomfortable and unsure about our friendship. Yeah, because my friends totally buy me sex toys all the time. That's definitely what friends do. At the time, I just put it in the back of my head and attempted to navigate through my own feelings and discomfort by continuing to just interact with him as a friend. People were wondering why I didn't say something to clarify it sooner, but what isn't known is that you can't always assume that someone is comfortable. It's a great area of situation. Discussing my discomfort doesn't always come as easy as someone who's gone through assault or harassment herself. Receiving his images essentially made me freeze, unable to say it wasn't okay for me, so I just put it off instead. I felt easier to do so than to confront someone because I was nervous and scared of their response. If I mentioned it, I felt like as if I could be taken as an insult or I was reading more into what was actually there. Had he asked me prior if I was okay to send pictures, it would have been easier for me to say I wasn't too okay with that. Anyways, I'm here to break down in detail of everything to the best of my abilities. Originally, I was going to stream with my friends, but they advised me that it was in my best interest to type it out and prevent myself from getting too emotional. Also, it's kind of funny how she said her friends advised her not to stream his alleged nudes out of concern, when in reality, it's illegal to do that because it's straight up revenge porn. And the fact that she was willing to make a call out video like that, go about the rest of her day acting like nothing happened and then try to stream to gain sympathy and clout really shows how egotistical she is. So let's get started. This is the origin of this entire situation. The peach emoji game, what was supposed to be a harmless fun, ended up escalated into a more uncomfortable situation. I just responded to everyone who sent me an emoji. Anyone who ever wanted to send a picture first checked in if it was okay. This is what the emoji game was, by the way. And like, I just want to point it out here that in this actual like emoji game, there are numerous of options here to send photos. Like it straight up says that you know, one of the numbers is to send me a full body nude. Is this the actual kind of game that friends play with each other? Because if it is, then you're kind of sending a little bit of mixed signals saying that you're not okay receiving some photos. When it clearly says in the game that you can just send a photo, like it that's in the actual line for it. I don't understand what she's talking about with this whole like, he should have asked if it was okay to send a photo because the game says you like there's numerous options to send said send photo like she's talking about how people were wondering why she didn't say anything or clarify that she wasn't comfortable but you literally are playing a game that you posted yourself saying hey let's like play this game and a lot of it is sending photos naughty photos this was the first instant where he sent a picture of himself the question he chose didn't require an image based someone anyways it caught me by surprise but it was just his arm so no big deal if it's no big deal then why are you making it seem like it's a big deal because the rest of this document makes it feel like it's a very big deal that he sent you that. And I can understand why he probably thought it was to send a photo because the majority of these different options is to send a photo in general. Nice. Could be better. I've only been able to hit the gym twice this month, but I'll treasure the compliment. I prefer dad bods. So I'm not really disappointed in non overly muscular bodies. And my body matches my humor. What can I say? I'm sorry that the others are being weird about this game. Kind of not the energy you need right now. I'm going to pass out because I get up bright and early. Have a lovely night, goddess. Have a good night. And then she's like, hence why my response wasn't anything out of the ordinary just mentioned it joked about it and moved on where's the joke what part of this is like the joke was it the nice are you saying that's the joke like i think i need to slam my head against the wall or something because i'm not getting the punchline here what was the joke saying that you prefer dad bods is that the joke like you don't you don't prefer dad bods? You don't think his body's nice? Like, I don't understand what the joke is. Where is the joke? However, the next part is where it changes a bit, but I'll break down the rest of it too. And by breakdown, she's going to say that she's going to cherry pick and take it out of context somehow, I'm sure. It continues on from me responding about how awkward some of my replies have been. Typical vent with friends. His statement on consent in this game. Yeah, which makes me worried for my mods too, but at least I'm being transparent and one of them mods for a model as well, so he knows what to expect, which is comforting that at least one understands. Gosh, and that's what's awful about this game is that it can be taken as an implied consent to send some nudes, even though the game literally says to fully send nudes. I always get super awkward reading flirtatious and lewd conversations. Like sometimes I like can't even watch some of Charlie's videos when he's talking about stuff or if he goes like way too far into like his jokes because I just I get really like awkward. I don't want to hear about uh, Charlie. I don't want to hear about your I don't need to know what it looks like. I don't need you to describe the shape of it. I just, 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 I just want to hear you dunk on a TikToker. I don't need to know the circumference of your entire genitalia. Like, I don't need to know that. I'm parasocial, but I'm not that parasocial. I have my boundaries. See, 
I'm stating my boundaries today. Baka. But people don't realize that you still need to like actual consent from the other party, not just pick number four and go wild. He states, and I quote, people don't realize that you still need actual consent from the other party, which made him a rare that regardless of the game, pitchers need consent no matter what point, no matter the context. I mean, yeah, of course you need consent for this kind of stuff, but if you are playing a game that is incredibly lewd and the rules of said lewd game is to send lewd photos, then obviously you are consenting to receive said lewd photos. If you didn't want the photos, don't play the game. Don't even bother like sending it. You're, if you're getting all these different DMs from all these like horny people and stuff trying to send you their lewds and nudes and all this stuff, then don't play the game don't play the game i don't understand like what do you mean you didn't consent to this aren't you a lootuber i'm so like confused on where the disconnect is between like i am a lewd content creator but i don't want to engage in lewd content it's it doesn't make any sense it's like going to a strip club and then you know you see like a girl uh, getting topless and stuff and you're giving her money and then she slaps you across the face for looking at her biddies. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I already asked someone to pick a different number and they got aggressively offended. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's because it was in the rules of the game, question mark, and they picked the number, which means, which means that they obviously didn't send the photo. They were asking if they could send the photo because that's part of the game. And she told them to pick a different number and then they got aggressively offended. And by that, what she probably means was they were just like, oh okay, I guess, and probably we're just like, okay, well, that was kind of weird. It probably just like, literally, why are you playing this game if you don't want to play the game? That's what I figured happened. Yeah, I didn't even want to see it anyways. Unfortunately, they're probably going to bother with some other poor soul with it tonight. Once I saw the questions, there's no way I'm doing it. Too many people want to show it. I clearly stated that people have become aggressively offended when I asked them to do something else that doesn't involve them sending me their pictures, which I was aware of could have been sent to me in advance. It's easier for me to state my boundaries when the opportunity is presented to me. Now, of course, that won't always happen, but it's always been easier for me to set my boundaries that way. I'm still working on the boundaries department myself. And then the next couple of screenshots is like them talking about getting lewd art together. I'm not going to show it because it's, you know, lewd, but you know, she's just kind of talking about how like, yeah, you know, it's just an example of us discussing the art piece and then jumping off topic then uh, and whatnot. But then there's this. And then I bumped the tweet back up just to see if more people were interested in asking questions. So you're already saying in the document that you were like uncomfortable seeing like the photo you didn't really want people to send you photos so why are you bumping up the tweet and like retweeting it to get more people to interact with it and wanting to ask questions and like play the game why are you doing that if you clearly don't actually want to play the game and as a friend he wanted to ask more so i had no issues with that i'm an open book with my friends about experiences and all that the topic calls for it so the peach game is continued so this is her actively consenting that she is okay with continuing to play the peach game i want you to like keep that in the back of your head she's actively okay with continuing to play the peach game because she says that she's an open book with her friends and she doesn't mind talking about experiences at the topic calls where she is saying she is okay with that i don't understand how any of that could be confused with saying that she did not consent to anything because this is consent to me i unless if like i don't understand english and like something in my brain just literally deleted itself and somehow i'm like misreading the sentence of her saying that which means she's like saying she's not consenting to it i i don't know i, I don't know I, I don't know and so they're just playing the peach game and whatever like it doesn't matter he ended up using this dice rolling app to pick a number for him we just talked about the topic in relation to the number it landed on and honestly it went on for a bit because i always make time for my friends even if it's just to talk about random stuff this is not random stuff what do you mean you guys are talking about really like lewd stuff that i don't talk about this stuff with my friends like i don't know I anyone who does this kind of stuff with their friends this is like role play isn't it like isn't this just role play do you role play with your friends like this like i don't know maybe i don't have friends and i don't understand this or something i i don't understand what this is 
talking about? And this is where he sends his first unsolicited picture. Where did he ask for my consent prior to sending the image? There was no lead up that made it seem like I was interested in getting images. It was a text question game. It caught me off guard and I wasn't sure how to answer. He just sends it to me. I did not consent to that image. He escalated it because it was too vanilla for him. I'm gonna be honest, this is not the kind of conversations that you should be having with your friends. Like this is like a little too weird. If she's making it seem like they were just talking about anime and then out of nowhere he just sends her his naked mole rat or something it's like so bizarre like they're clearly doing this like game that's like super lewd and stuff and like i don't know if you're talking about lewd things and stuff you're probably gonna get into a lewd mood and is sending the image kind of random sure i guess and then in the rest of the document she was talking about how she was just too uncomfortable to like say that she was uncomfortable because she was just so caught off guard from seeing that photo and she says here that she's not entirely at that point in her life to let someone know when i'm uncomfortable or someone makes me un or if someone makes uncomfortable advances towards her like where i'm brave enough to set my boundaries if there's no lead up for that to allow me to set them that doesn't make any sense because earlier in the document you literally said that you prefer people to like give you that opportunity to tell you what your boundaries are and literally in this actual dm conversation he asks you if you want to keep going with this peach game and if you want to continue he literally gave you an opportunity to ask if you for you to say you don't want to play anymore if you are this uncomfortable you have the don't respond back option you have the i don't want to play this game anymore like you have been given so many opportunities for this to not continue and her response is asking me if i wanted to continue was the only context in the question game i stated i was already uncomfortable but froze on about what to do about setting a boundary again i just froze and failed to state my own boundaries i think i'm really losing brain cells right now i really do and then he sent another photo when i had already frozen on the previous one and almost felt too late to say anything because there was no lead up to the images i wasn't aware he was even going to send anything let alone continue sending them what do you mean he literally was asking you if you wanted to keep going and you're like I just froze like I saw a male and I just I just froze and then the male the males the males the males there was never a single time he asked for my consent prior to sending me images it put me in an uncomfortable position even as a friend it goes against his entire statement about asking for consent no matter what which is why I left feeling infuriated as statements regarding consent of the VTubing community and claiming to be an advocate for when he has failed to do so with me and a few others for privacy reasons because it's not my place and I can't share those information the interactions with them that put you in an uncomfortable position position as a friend but not him buying you sex toys that doesn't make you uncomfortable which you were totally down for in the dms by the way you literally changed it in your throne item but sending the photo of himself the irl photo is suddenly like too much and uncomfortable so like are you saying that you're only comfortable when it financially benefits you for them to like do stuff like that because that's like what i'm getting from all of this and a lot of you might ask why didn't i say anything i was too scared and uncertain at the time i never wanted to talk to him i never wanted to ask him directly when the whole VTuber drama came out because I didn't want to point a finger at a friend and have it blow up in my face like it has now. Uh, where's the sauce? How are you going to serve me this entire plate of spaghetti without any sauce to back up your claims? I thought there were nudes in this, but all I got was a shirtless photo. So like, is this what she's dramatized by? An arm? Oh, oh God, no, not the arm. My kryptonite, no, no. Uh, it's a male arm man scare me people scare me like i'm trying really hard not to clown on her because i'm starting to realize that this person isn't really a content creator and i think she's just an average person who just became a vtuber and is like just doing this for attention so i'm trying to be as neutral as possible because i also don't need her going around being like oh this vtuber is now harassing me and look at everyone harassing me so i'm trying to be as neutral as possible but it's really really hard with how goofy this entire situation is granted that was my own fault considering i made my post today in the heat of the moment rather than typing out something like this beforehand for that i apologize for jumping the gun without preparing my ammo for lack of better wording however i wasn't expecting him to call himself out based on my post since i didn't name drop him nor did i mean to make it seem as if i was going to name drop him at this time regardless i apologize for my improper and unnecessary way of starting the conversation but i do not apologize for the topic or for stating my discomfort without tagging anyone 
someone specifically. It was a vent post that blew out of my control that would have been handled more carefully. Like this reminds me of one of those situations where people think the internet, especially Twitter, is their personal diary where they can just vent out all of their problems and complaints about the world. And they don't really think about how the things they say or the actions that they do can have consequences because they're just posting into the void. One of my favorite YouTubers, Gabby Bell, has a really great video talking more about this concept of how these people aren't actually influencers or content creators, but they're just ordinary people who think that, you know, they can just post whatever they want onto the internet and it's just really like a void. It's nothing's going to come out of it. And they just really don't understand how powerful the internet is because you don't know who's going to see this since we're all anonymous. And the fact that over a hundred thousand people saw her like little vent video is just really telling how powerful the internet is. I guess in a way this was to an extent the entirety of the statement I wanted to make without anyone else included in it for their own privacy reasons and because I did not have their consent or permission to share their experiences with him. Okay, let's just indulge in the brain fog that is clouding my mind and let me explain what I think happened in this entire situation. I think that Murasaki is a mentally unstable eager girl who jumped into the VTubing bandwagon because it's the new trendy way to get attention online since people fawn over anime women and she is one of those people that thinks being a lewd creator is a fast pass to success which is why she became a lewd tuber. Then she met Atramentum since the lewd tubing scene is pretty tight niche and they start talking and hitting things off. They start collabing getting to know each other more and then they start getting a little too close where the lines between just being friends, friends with benefits or parasocialism between co-workers all just start to kind of blur. Like I think feels were being thrown but they weren't really being caught that well. And then out of nowhere Murasaki just stops making content you know as typical e-girls and e-boys do because they're not real content creators they're just people who go online looking for attention and think becoming a streamer or a YouTuber or a VTuber is like a way to socialize and make friends not something to like take seriously you know like an actual job. And so since she stopped making as much content due to like personal reasons or whatever it may or may not be, Archer stopped interacting with her as much because he wants to be an actual content creator. Like this is a job to him. And maybe, I don't know, maybe he also just felt some red flags coming from Murasaki and decided that it would be best for him to distance himself from her. And she took that personally, like really personally. Like she made vague tweets claiming how people she thought were her friends were just using her for their own personal gain to grow. And then she got got pissed that he stopped interacting with her. So instead of just DMing him about their falling out to try to, you know, patch things up like normal people would, she decided to turn around and try to cancel this dude and smear his entire reputation by loosely grasping at straws to pin something on him that he clearly didn't do. She straight up lied and then choked on said lie because when you constantly surround yourself in this delusional fantasy that people like you, then you're going to get swallowed up by the truth eventually. And well, this is exactly what's happening right now. And if none of this made any sense to you, then it's okay because it really didn't make a lot of sense to me either when I was trying to wrap my brain around this for the past like four hours because I just had to keep rereading it to try to understand what the hell was going on. I genuinely don't think any of this call out stuff was necessary. It was a very obvious and painful attempt for attention and now Mura is going to be a laughing meme for the rest of her internet career. Not like she had much anyways to begin with because looking at her track record she barely streams and mostly just posts on Twitter. Honestly uh, kudos to Arta for actually you know taking this time to like really kind of move forward and you know he's actually Actually making his own jokes and he even was smart enough to reintroduce himself you know because clearly this is blowing up and getting a lot of attention a lot of eyeballs and from a business perspective he's making a very good business decision to just kind of like laugh it off be like yeah you know this goofy stuff is happening um this is what i'm dealing with and yeah this is my uh irl body guys my dad bod here you go this is me because what else would you have to do in this situation this is your job this is your career that someone's trying to like destroy someone's trying to take away like your paycheck so I think he's taken a really good route on this compared to Mura, who um, hasn't posted since all of those replies where someone told her maybe she should get off Twitter, which I very much think she needs to. 
I think the lesson to be learned in this is that don't become a VTuber if your main goal is to just make friends and this isn't something that you actually consider to be a job. If you're not mentally prepared to be criticized or have interactions that are going to make you uncomfortable, then don't put yourself in a situation where something like that will happen. I understand it's hard to say no and just because someone doesn't say no doesn't automatically mean it's a yes. But if you are claiming to be a lewd creator and you're going around DMing your friends these lewd games to try to get to know their lewdness and stuff, especially since they clearly have options to post nudes of themselves, which seriously, why would you send that to your friends, you degenerate perv? Like, don't put yourself in a situation like that if you're not comfortable with receiving unsavory messages like that. It just further pushes the narrative that Murasaki was just trying to bait him and is literally grasping at straws to find dirt on this guy and take him down all because she didn't consent receiving a topless photo of him, which she totally did consent to, by the way, because she was giving many, many opportunities to end the conversation or just say she wasn't interested or, you know, just literally don't respond or don't send someone that. And what's really disturbing is that she truly believes that, you know, as a sex worker, people sending you nudes from a game that you clearly started on your own accord and even bummed it up for more interaction and attention so that way people can play with you is suddenly a sign of sex harassment and assault is like really a derange and mentally ill take is this what it means to be terminally online or something because like i could have definitely acted more in character or something for this right but like actually that would have been kind of funny like being in character criticizing someone being in character for like a call up post man uh, like, I didn't really put a lot of editing into this because it's way too early in the day. And by that, I mean the sun is still out. So let me know if you like this style of video content where we can just kind of look at some goofy shit online, laugh at it and go, wow, that was really cringe. And then go about our day. Or, you know, if you prefer me to do some more Mariyume aesthetics. I really don't care either way. I just want to talk about this because experiencing cringe with someone else makes it a lot more bearable and like... I don't know. I guess I didn't really want to further be into the cringe void of like being in character, <laughs> talking about another person being in character, doing a call out thing. Like, I just, I don't know. Like little bro, I think my meds have fully kicked in, but I've been trying so hard to like focus, rubbing my two brain cells together to like understand this, that I now have given myself very bad ADHD brain fog. Like I think I'm traumatized by this. So you better subscribe because each sub is one brain cell that I gain since I clearly need them after consuming this massive amount of brain rot. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. I'm gonna go back into my basement and lay down where I belong because I feel safe in the dark where I like to let my mind just fester on the internet into the bewilderness of the void. The void is my safe space and I hope you very much enjoyed indulging into this tea with me because I serve up some pretty tasty tea that's totally not going to make you start having hallucinations. Anyways, I'm going to go get some rest because I am very exhausted after consuming this content. So good night, sleep tight, and don't let Mari you may bite. Unless if you consented, of course, because consent is sexy. Oh yeah, Sumi.